Hello, and welcome to part two of the Rocket Pool Staking Explainer series. If you haven't seen part one, we'd highly recommend watching that first as it gives a great overview on what Rocket Pool is and how it works. In this video, we will be focusing on the two DAOs which are responsible for helping run the Rocket Pool protocol. Each one has a unique set of responsibilities and different types of members that make them up. So, what is a DAO? DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. They provide governance or services in a decentralized manner using incentives which align with their interest in being a member of such an organization. It allows members to pool and distribute funds in a trustless manner and is the heart of coordination in a Web3 landscape. The Rocket Pool Protocol DAO will be responsible for a host of settings across the protocol and be run by RPL Token Governance. Currently, their Protocol DAO is responsible for these broad settings. How much RPL inflation is generated yearly to reward participants and align incentives in providing decentralized staking. How the RPL token rewards are divided between DAOs and node operators. How slashed RPL is sold at auction to make the protocol whole. The minimum and maximum RPL staking amounts needed to run a node the minimum and maximum node commission fees that node runners receive from stakers, and the minimum and maximum deposit amounts of ETH for our ETH. Almost every aspect of the protocol is currently configurable. In the future, RPL governance will be the driving force that is able to propose changes to these settings and pass them should the majority wish it. With standard DAOs using a single layer of governance with little checks and balances, we are currently looking at implementing a new two-tiered DAO governance structure to improve upon these shortcomings. Enter the Oracle DAO. The Rocket Pool protocol has two types of nodes, regular bonded nodes, which were covered in part one, and Oracle nodes who make up the Oracle DAO. Oracle nodes that make up the Oracle DAO are largely the same as regular nodes and run the same smart node software. What makes these nodes special is an on-chain DAO where members perform extra duties for the protocol and are rewarded for doing so. So why do we need an Oracle DAO? Ethereum in its current state is operating with two separate chains, the ETH1 mainnet chain and the ETH2 beacon chain. These two chains are not connected as of the making of this video, and they may never be in a way that would allow a smart contract on ETH1 to know about the state of any validator on the ETH2 chain such as if the validator had been staking well and earning rewards, or performing badly and being offline regularly. So how does a decentralized staking protocol for ETH2 based on ETH1 handle such a task when these two chains are separate? This is where the Oracle DAO comes in. It helps bridge this gap and helps provide valuable Oracle services and network liveliness for the protocol and all its users, both stakers and node operators alike. Being a member of this DAO means you're operating as a group, any data reported back for any of these duties requires a majority consensus. So if data reported to the protocol is not agreed upon by more than 50% of the members, it is not accepted. This helps prevent malicious behavior, nodes that go offline, and helps ensure the integrity of the reported data. Here is an overview of the Oracle DAO duties, separated into Oracle tasks and service tasks. There are two main Oracle tasks acquired by the Oracle DAO members, both of which are integral to the protocol. Mini pool validator balances. Each validator in the protocol is referred to as a mini pool. It contains 16 ETH from the node operator and 16 ETH from the deposit pool. Performance of these validators needs to be monitored so the protocol can calculate the performance of all of the validators in the decentralized network and allow users holding our ETH to exchange it for ETH plus rewards at the correct exchange rate. RPL ETH Ratio When depositing 16 ETH as a node operator, you are required to deposit a minimum 10% of that ETH's value in RPL as an insurance promise to the protocol. The more RPL you provide as insurance, the more RPL rewards you earn. To make sure this amount of RPL is correct, the current RPL ETH Ratio must be reported and agreed upon by greater than 50% of the Oracle DAO members. Oracle DAO members must also perform daily services for the protocol. Mini Pool Validator Oracle DAO members must mark validators as exited, withdrawn when validators perform these actions on the beacon chain. Protocol Liveliness Oracle DAO members will make sure the protocol is always lively and staking as much ETH from the deposit pool as it can to help generate rewards for our ETH holders. 
Oracle DAO members can also create unbonded mini pool validators that don't require 16 ETH to be matched by themselves. Importantly, to maintain decentralization in this scenario, unbonded validators are only ever selected for ETH assignment from the deposit pool if there are no bonded node operators available, as they always have priority. There is also a cap on the amount that members can make. The Oracle DAO will launch at Genesis and consist of 15 to 20 members from peers in the community, ecosystem, and industry. We believe these actors represent the values and ethos that ETH2 embodies. It will operate entirely as its own decentralized DAO through on-chain governance that can be audited by anyone. Transparency is key. Once the DAO is live, new members must be invited by an existing member and post a sizable RPO bond to ensure good behavior. Members will then be approved to join when consensus is reached by more than 50% of current members. Members can apply to leave at any time and will receive their RPO bond back when consensus among members approves their departure. If a member wants to replace their current node with a new one and transfer the RPO bond to that, they can choose to replace their membership account with a new one that will assume their role and own their bond. Members that show malicious behavior, like attempting to report bad balances often or going offline on a regular basis, can be kicked by existing members when consensus is reached. They may also incur an optional burn penalty to their bond depending on the size of their offense. Members can propose to improve the protocol with upgrades to its smart contracts. Should consensus be reached to an upgrade, it is passed and the contract is upgraded. Members can propose to change settings of the DAO from the quorum required for proposals to pass to the RPL bond amount required for new members to join, and even the number of unbonded validators members are allowed to make. Being an Oracle DAO member is a paid position, as Oracle nodes are expected to relay ETH2 Oracle data back to the protocol's contracts on ETH1. They must be aligned for the long term with the decentralized staking ecosystem. Members are required to stake large amounts of RPL to signal their alignment. This bond provides the potential for large economic loss if they act maliciously. In exchange for these services, Oracle nodes are rewarded with 15% of RPL inflation annually. This allows members to earn a return for playing this crucial role in the ongoing health and sustainability of the protocol. We will be announcing the first set of Rocket Pool Oracle node operators closer to launch. If you believe you might have what it takes to be a member, be it in the form of a notable community member, ecosystem actor, or a top shelf staking as a service provider, please reach out to us in our Discord for consideration.